everyone, and welcome to Hawaii, the state of clean energy. I'm Mitch Ewan, your host, and our, our sponsor today is the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. I'm very pleased to welcome my guest, Jill Wagner, head of forestry for Terraformation. Welcome to the show, Jill. Thank you very much, Mitch. I'm very happy to be here. Well, tell us uh, about uh, Terraformation. Uh, what does it do and who started Terraformation? I'm kind of curious about that. Yes, Terraformation is a forestry tech company and our founder is Yishan Wong. He is a tech guy. He started in um, with uh, PayPal. He was an engineer with PayPal and uh, went to Facebook and then he became the CEO of Reddit. Um, he's, as an engineer, he's a problem solving person and he thought a lot about climate change and wanted to do something very specific to solve climate change. So uh, he started Terraformation and we are, um, our, we believe that um, natural carbon capture is the most simple way to approach climate change. That is by planting trees. So we have a very holistic approach and we, we offer a lot of forestry tech for people on the ground all over the world, both in Hawaii, we have projects and all over the world to uh, do forestry so we can scale and solve the climate crisis. So before we get into uh, the, all the details, I'm just a little bit curious too about the funding and how this is funded, because I think that uh, will be interesting to our audience. Yes, um, Yishan started the company and he put his own funding into it. And we also, we also have angel investors who um, invest in Terraformation. There are many people who care about the future and care about climate change and want to contribute to help solve this problem. So we have angel investors as well. And then I, I'll tell you about our technology and what we're developing right. to um, to offer all of, yeah, for projects. Well, it's uh, really awesome that a private individual put his own personal money into something like this. I was also able to attract like-minded people to also put their money in it. So you're like not totally dependent on government handouts. I mean, this is really great stuff. And, you know, I wish uh, more, that there were more people like him to step up and do similar projects. But anyway, let's get on. So let's uh, have a look at your next slide because I think this is very instructive. Okay, yes. So our mission is to accelerate natural I carbon capture through forestry tech. And we want to turn degraded land into healthy forests. So we have developed a lot of technology to do that. We have, we're developing partnerships across the globe. We offer uh, forest um, technology, training, open source forestry applications, carbon credit sales and financing for projects. Let's, let me just drill in. You said this is uh, more than just Hawaii. This is a global uh, project. So uh, what countries or regions of the world are you currently operating in? We are developing projects in places like Uganda, Tanzania, Ecuador, Puerto Rico, uh, the Ukraine, the Ukraine, Azerbaijan, Spain, we have a partner in Spain. We have a lot of, you know, many, many places. Um, are, I've, been, I've, been to, uh, I've been to Costa Rica on a hydrogen conference a couple of years ago, and uh, they're really heavy into reforestation. And they're very yeah. proud of the fact that they were able to reforest about 50% of their land. And almost it's like that picture you showed about turning this into this. I mean, it's amazing the transformation that, was, that took place. And uh, right up to the uh, to to the president, I met the president and the first lady of the country when I was there, and uh, they they couldn't you know they were really really excited about what Costa Rica did and how it's showing the world uh, you know a really good example of what you can actually do that you can actually do it you know because if you look at That's the left hand side of that picture you can see that must be like a rainforest shot you know it's like wow can that ever ever come back. And I guess right. the answer is yes, thanks to things like that, what you're doing. 
Absolutely, yes. So we've developed some forest technology. You can go to the next slide. One of them is um, an all-in-one nursery kit. I've determined that there are some bottlenecks that forestry projects on the ground have. And in developing countries, sometimes they don't have protection for, for early seedlings, for young seedlings. And so just having a greenhouse with the proper equipment is a huge ability. It really helps people with their capacity. So this we, we ship this greenhouse in a 40 foot shipping container. It comes with the tables, the irrigation, the 20,000 pots and everything they would need to develop a forest nursery. If you go to the next slide, you can see my nurseries, which are the exact ones that they would be getting in Kona. These are the ones that we operate in Kona. And um, if you go to the next slide, you can see a little bit on the inside. And then on the, on the next slide, you can see on the inside again, my lead a nursery person, Lehua, is, is propagating. This, when you have um, seeds, you need to have a more protected area before they go outside into acclimatization. So these nursery kits are really helpful for projects on the ground. And then if you go to the next slide, you can see we also have developed solar, solar powered seed banks. These seed banks come again in a 40 foot container and they're completely solar powered. They're, they have um, climate control, they're air conditioned and dehumidification. They have three workstations. They have come with three refrigerators and they can hold three to 5 million seeds. And all of the equipment comes with um, the, the seed bank. So this is really a game changer. If you go to the next slide, you can see the seed bank that I run in Kona and there's Lehua working on the seeds. On the next slide, you can see it. Again. I have a question about yes. the seeds. I have, I have a question about the seeds. Like, you know, what, what's the uh, timeline from the time you, I mean, how do you collect the seeds? Where do they come from? What kind of processes do, do they have to go through? And, uh, and then basically, what's the timeline? from the time you pick whatever it is off a, the, uh, the host tree, I'll call it, to the point where you're ready to plant the seedling? Well, that's a good question. And it really is the heart of the matter because it all starts with the seeds. And we want to support projects wherever they are to save their regional seeds, their native seeds, from their region. This is a really, really big bottleneck. We have, you know, the Trillion Tree Initiative um, from World Economic Forum from 2020 to 2030, we want to plant a trillion trees. And the fact is, if you think about it, if you need to plant a trillion trees, you need two trillion seeds. You need at least double the amount of, of seed because all seed is not viable. So when you think about that, then you realize that you need to start amassing seed. You need to collect seed and you need to work on banking seed for these projects. A lot of governments have made commitments and now the people on the ground need support to be able to do this. And so that's a great question because you need to go out and you to have permission from, from government lands or private lands collect seed <clears throat> and bring it back into the seed lab to process it and prepare it for projects. So that there's a whole sequence of events that has to happen to make a restoration project work. So how do you how do you make sure that they're not infected by pests or you know some kind of a disease? Uh, you know, in other words, how, how do you make sure they're absolutely clean seeds? Well, you can, I mean, first of all, most of the, a lot of um, pests and diseases are, are on the, the actual trees and they don't always transfer to seeds. Seeds can get bugs and pests in them too. And the best way to ensure that you, you don't have that is to collect ripe seed, to collect fresh seed. The longer it stays on the tree, then you have, you give an opportunity for 
insects to arrive and, and to make a home in the seed and start eating the embryos inside. So the quicker you, you collect, you, you have to monitor. It requires going out into the field and monitoring plants <clears throat> to determine when they're gonna be ready, when the seed will be ripe. And from then, <clears throat> you can um, properly collect and get those back into the seed lab. And what you do is we have seed cleaning equipment. So you, you remove the seed from the chaff. There's a, there's a skin on the seed, it's either dry or wet. You have to process that seed and clean it. And then you can either take the seed and prepare it for banking, for storing it for the future or for propagating it for your project. And you can make a decision then, but you, the seed has to be cleaned. I have one final question, then we can move on. I'm sorry to you know, zero in on this, but uh, we have a, an irradiation facility here. I know for sure on Oahu, uh, you know, they kind of irradiate fruits and vegetables. Is there any kind of a program to, you know, similar to irradiate seeds just to like make totally sure that they're okay? No, or no, we don't do that because I think <clears throat> there's a it's possible that it could harm the, the seed, the life of the seed. The best way to, to protect seeds is just to collect them ripe and then to, to get them into storage to process them, you know, promptly. And okay. that, that, that takes care of it. We, we, so we store and, prop, um, and bank a lot of seed, millions and millions of seeds. So, okay. yeah. Okay, well, let's move on to the next slide. <laughs> All right, so we have also developed, we've got a bunch of tech geniuses on our team. So we've, we have developed some apps that um, help projects to do, to do a better job. One is a seed collecting app. You can go to the founder tree and that's what you were talking about. You can go to the founder tree and you can mark that tree and know where you collected that seed from and you wanna get as much genetic diversity from as many individuals as you can. And it helps you to um, really organize your collections. This, when it goes back to the seed bank, it downloads, when it goes back to Wi-Fi, it downloads that data. And there's a very nice database that they've um, created for the collections. It can, you can look at seeds by species, by site, and you can start determining what you have in your collections. We've also are developing a tree planting app and this app helps people when they plant to mark trees and to, and to map their projects. This is a really big deal. It comes, it's gonna come into the carbon credit <clears throat> issue because when you have a project and if you wanna sell carbon credits, you've gotta verify this project and you need to map your site and you need to show what you've planted. And a lot of projects in, in the world, in developing countries um, and, and developed countries don't have good mapping systems. So we're developing a very simple mapping system so people can show what they're doing on the ground. And it's, it's, very, it's really, really nice. Had a rush of, uh, you know, what to the brain. So um, I'm just thinking now with this program you talked about, you know, we have all these macadamia nut uh, growers and coffee growers. I would think that uh, they should apply this technology to their to their or, uh, orchards and and, and uh, be able to uh, start looking at uh, secondary income by by collecting carbon credits. Is this something that you're doing in the local community, like in uh, in Kona? Yes, we we're developing a project now in Hilo um, that's sort of a it's been a, an abandoned macnut farm and re, we're rehabilitating it. And what we're doing is we're creating an agroforestry system. So we support a bunch of land use systems. One of them is native forest restoration. Another is silvopasture. That's teaming up with the cattle people to plant trees in pasture to improve the quality of the pastures and the animals. Another is called agroforestry and agroforestry is where you have a layered system. You may have a high value hardwood as an overstory. Then you have an economic crop like coffee or mac nuts or cacao as a mid story. And you can have natives in the understory and you can also have animals. In the case of the mac nut farm that we're developing, we're gonna have sheep 
to um, help graze the, the grass and they won't eat the mac nuts. So we're in good shape on that one. Uh, <laughs> and then we also support um, um, sim, um, timber silviculture and that's that's growing hardwoods for timber, but the, the and that has some multi benefits. One is the timber, if it's, we, we support selectively logged, um, so not clear cutting. Um, we want to provide habitat and we want also to generate carbon credits. Terra Formation is really interested in pushing hard on the carbon credit market. So I'll talk to you more about that as we go down. So uh, at what age, I mean, can somebody with an existing uh, orchard come in like, and, and you're not just starting from the, uh, from the seed stage where you're looking at carbon credits. Can you come in at some intermediate or you already have mature trees and still uh, be able to tap into this, that kind of a program? Well, first of all, right now, the carbon credit market is, is really focused on large lands and so that's that's one thing um it, it's got to be a pretty large piece of property we're trying to unlock that so mm -hmm. that smaller landowners can benefit from selling carbon credits and terraformation would like to act as a bridge for, for buyers businesses that want to offset their carbon emissions with forestry projects on the ground that that um, have forests to protect the thing about existing forest, your question is that you can you can um, sell carbon credits on existing forests, but it's got to be you've got to show that you have um, you've got some kind of you're doing some kind of protection. If you didn't protect that forest, something would happen to it. For example, maybe it would be somebody would try to log it maybe ungulates, animals would come and eat those trees. And you've got to show some kind of, if you can show some kind of protection like fencing or security, then you can sell carbon credits on, on an existing piece of property. If you have a new property that's completely denuded and you want to plant trees and you're, and you're actively working on it, you can also sell carbon credits and um, basically you have to commit the property to protect it either for a minimum of 25 years or in perpetuity. You're gonna protect this and you're not, this land is not gonna be cut down in the future. Got it. Okay, thanks. We'll go to the next slide now. We also offer um, help with people who have water issues. Um, there are a lot of, uh, projects that have limited capacity in terms of water, either the water that they have is not clean or they, they just don't have access. So they can drill a well, or if they have a well, they can um, desalinate it. And we, we did a test case at our Kohala, at a Kohala site that we call Pacific Flight. And that, that property is um, a really good, a really good example of what solar desalination can do. And this, this is not a new technology. Obviously, people have been desalinating water for a long time now. But because the, the cost of solar has come down so much, and it continues to, it 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 unties it with fuels, and it it allows us to do these kind of desalination that that would have been very, very expensive. Now it's really coming down in price. So we're trying to help people to do that and to clean their water. So you can uh, go to the next slide and you can see uh, that's our, our Kohala site water. And then we also help people in the next slide with um, just catchment systems. And it, it's not, it doesn't sound very, you know, very innovative in Hawaii, but I can tell you that people all over the world do not do water catchment like we do in Hawaii. It's pretty common here, but yes, I did a project in Vietnam and, you know, this is a, this is a place that's similar to Hawaii, that, but it's, it's more, even more um, accentuated they have two seasons a wet season and dry season but the wet season is a monsoon season so they're getting torrential rains half of the year right and then the other half it's parched it's cracked it's very very dry and they don't catch the water 
So when you have to do a planting project, you're really risking all that planting and the work that you've done if you don't consistently water those plants through that dry season. So simple things like water um, catchment is very, very helpful for projects. Interesting. The next slide I can show you is the carbon credits. And we, as I said, we're, our, our mission is to help landowners to have access to carbon credits as a way to protect land and to make money because for the duration of the project, which is our projects we're setting up are about 25 years, it provides people with funding, a funding stream. And one of the ways that we're helping people to fund what they need if they're doing big restoration, big tree planting projects, and they say, we really need a seed bank, we really need a nursery, then we can provide those 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 technologies uh, at no cost up front, and then we do a revenue share, and that's that's a business model that we we're developing. So we can say, okay, we we'll, we just want to get the money back that we put out for for the tech that we provided. There's no markup, and then you can get the tech at no cost and get you started, and um, and then we we have also developed a relationship on on a multi-year you know multi-year relationships that's very important because a lot of projects maybe can get grants or maybe can get some funding on the short term but then after a while a year or two very quickly it runs out and the their their support leaves and and when that happens sometimes projects fail and it's important for, for projects to be able to, to make it through because this is, this is fighting climate change. This is carbon capture and it's, it's got to succeed. It has to, so that we're committed to working with people and, and making sure it does. And um, so one of the other um, things that I wanted to tell you that we're developing is we're developing training. We're, we have two series of videos one is um, called nursery management and the other is on seed banking. So people can get um, the, the, all the training step-by-step. Step. They're 10, 10 minute videos and it goes through step-by-step step what they need to know to run a forest nursery and to collect seeds and to run a seed bank. So they can learn that and go through it and get one-on-one -on -one Zoom um, calls with, with our, our leads so they can, if they have any questions, they can get those answered as well. So we really try to support them in whatever way we can. <laughs> that sounds great. So a uh, quick question now, do you have a relationship with the uh, University of Hawaii CTAR organization? Is that something yes. that they do? Yes, I work with uh, JB Friday. Um, uh, the UX, UH Extension Forester. And um, I also, I've, I've got a, a good size forestry team and I, I have been um, reaching out several times a lot to the UH forest team and the um, environmental training, the forestry training um, at, at, here at UH Hilo for people that want to learn conservation who are learning conservation um, in the university and then want to get jobs. And we are, we're expanding our teams, you know, a lot every, <laughs> every couple of months. Well, that was the question I was going to ask. It's like, what's, what's the interest from the up and coming generations in this kind of uh, field? Like, you know, it's really, I hear the average age of the farmer is like 65 or something like that. Uh, farming's a tough business. What, what are you finding? Uh, what, what's been your uh, experience so far uh, with the younger generation coming up? Well, two things. One is I think we have to be, we're, we will be, and we have to be accountable to the future generations. They are very concerned about their future, and they are, are asking us what we're doing to ensure their, their, you know, the good health of the planet. Secondly, we have a whole um, uh, development that we're doing it with, we're calling it new forest creators. And we are helping young people to learn restoration and, and we're hiring them and we're teaching them about the whole process of restoration so that they can do this work and they love 
we, we, we have a really excellent team and they love it. And I'm, I'm hiring all the time. So we, we definitely are gonna be expanding. We wanna be a very big presence in Hawaii. This is our home and we want to give a lot to, to Hawaii. We're very blessed to be here and we want to do, you know, do a lot of good for Hawaii and then, and then reach out to the rest of the world. Well, that's great. So uh, almost the final question, because we're in our last two minutes, is um, what, are, what are your major challenges? You know, I mean, you're doing all this good stuff, but what are some of the challenges that you still need to overcome? Well, I think the biggest challenge is time. We're in a race. We've got to do a lot in a very short time. We really only have 10 years. If you listen to what scientists are saying, about what happens with the climate is it continues to fluctuate. It continues to get more and more severe. And so we, our biggest challenge is, is I think is, is a private, public private, private partnerships, really getting governments to get on board and to uh, trust and to start doing many more partnerships so that we can get this work done. And that's what we're going to push hard on, I think, for the next few years. Okay. Uh, I think I have one final question, Mike. So I, I was on your website and I saw one of your movies and you're planting these little seedlings out in the middle of the, um, in, like in the middle of the desert, like the second slide we saw. And so how do you actually distribute the water to them? I mean, you, you generate the water. How do you distribute it to make sure that you, you water or all, you keep these plants watered until they get to some kind of a level where they're they're self-sufficient. Yes, there, there's different applications um, for water um, depending on the site. One is, is uh, above ground um, ir irrigation. We use Drisco pipe and we drip, we drip irrigate um, plants. It's very efficient and we fine tune it for the site. Some sites you can't do that and there's not it's too they're too large or the projects are too large if you're going into tens of thousands of plants then you have to um, use other systems and there are some systems that are like water boxes where you can fill water and they can slowly feed plants and um and then of course a lot of projects we depend on the rainfall and we try to time the planting with the rainy season so that we can um, help those plants get established and make it through. And then they're adapted to, you know, wherever we're planting native plants largely. So they're adapted to, to that region and they will survive if they can make it through the first, you know, year of their life. Well, uh, Jill, believe it or not, we're at the end of our time. So I would like to thank you and your founder very much for helping us save ourselves. I've been talking to Jill Wagner, head of forestry of Terraformation, and they're planning it one tree at a time to make a better world for all of us. So thank you so much, Jill. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay, so aloha, everyone. We'll be back uh, next Wednesday with Hawaii, the state of clean energy.